Everybody, how's hey. everybody doing tonight? You oh happy gosh. Saturday, everybody. There is yeah. something about that intro. Every time I hear it, I just get kind of jacked. <laughs> right? <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, that's yeah. a good thing. Woo! I get jacked too. <laughs> Shit. All right. See, people, everybody's coming in here tonight. So, guys, uh, we have a little bit of a little bit of a change tonight. Um, Tom, CEO of uh, Felix Smart, he fell tonight and he cut his head open. So he's actually in emergency right now, two and a half hour wait to get some stitches. So he's not going to be joining us tonight, but we have him rescheduled to come back. But we hopefully, you know, he'll do okay tonight. And if he does get out early enough, he's going to jump on it and still chat with us. But if he doesn't make it, we've rescheduled it for probably for next weekend. So hopefully you feel better than Tom. So we're just tonight, we're going to still chat about, you know, uh, aquarium controllers different kinds of products that are out there on the market right now. And all you viewers, you guys want to drop all your comments here and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible. So that you got D and Beeves here. So you guys have anything to say before we start? What's up everybody? What's up? Right. How's it going? I hope everybody had a great week. Yep. Um, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully, you know, we don't have any craziness happen tonight, but you never know. I mean, anything <laughs> can happen here, right? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I live on craziness. I love the crazy. Embrace the crazy. Right. It definitely makes the day go by a little bit more um, interesting. We'll go with that. Interesting. As long as there's no crash in the tank. I don't like that kind of crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a little bit of little Too soon. Bit of Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> you know, hey, well, I just found out about that stuff today. Come on now. Well, no, we all had experience with tanks. I still found fish outside that I didn't even know were outside in the pond. Oh, really? I got a big split. We had the uh, the weather drop 30 degrees this week. Today it was 70, and one of the tubs, and then my son's yelling, <laughs> one of the tubs split right down the middle, so I was like running around like a madman. With, What's that? Flex seal? Yes, Flex Seal works. <laughs> like, thank you, Flex Seal Company. <laughs> I can't believe it's that cold down down there, man. Right here it was plus nineteen today. T-shirt weather. Yeah, but it get cold and then it got hot. And if you're doing any kind of pond or anything outside and you're trying to move plants and yeah. trying to rescape, you got a very very narrow window. That's true. I, I'm just glad that that cold hasn't hit here like that yet. Right. That's what happened, like with Tom. He, you know, did ice rain there and snowed and he slipped. So that happens when it comes out of the blue. You're not used to it, eh? <laughs> well, see, I'm only home now because, uh, well, I got a wedding tomorrow that I'd completely forgotten about until I remembered this evening from them messaging me. And also, I was trying to dodge a storm. Apparently, Montana is getting Ooh. no snow. Yeah. No snow here in Canada, buddy. See? Well, well, that will bring us right into about control. Yep. One of the things that I think maybe maybe was the first thing that we controlled in a tank was temperature. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But like, what do you do when your room is set to one temperature and your tank is set to another temperature? Right. That's one of the things that we use control for because now they have thermostats yeah. that give us notices and things like that. So how about everybody chime in and like what their control points are in a tank? What are the things that you mainly worry about controlling on your tank? Exactly. Exactly. Heaters are a big one for myself. Yeah. Do you have two heaters? Right? You have two? Yeah. Yes, I have two. I have two. And they're both on at the same time, but the tent, like, it just regulates throughout the day. Like here in Canada, like, you know, you know, winter's coming and stuff. So it depends on the temperature inside the house. Sometimes you know, one heater's running all the time, the other one just coming on and off when it's required to bring up the temperature or lower the temperature. Or sometimes in the summer, my heat is like, they're not even on. 
Hmm. You know what I mean? They're only on half the time, so it works out pretty good. Even by running the air conditioning in the house and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bonus. Yeah. Well, it's Mine are on every single night. <laughs> the elevation here, I'm telling you, it's like being in a barren wasteland. Oh, you know? really? Oh, yeah, it'll be 900 degrees during the day. But as soon as the sun goes over the mountain there, it'll drop down to like negative 30, I swear. It's just terrible. Yeah. Sean's fish have like down jackets on. They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just look at my right now. Only one of my ears is on right now. Well, you know, it's funny. Like I insulated my whole man cave. Yeah. Downstairs, the man cave. Only one, two of these tanks down here are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three of them have heaters. So the temperature fluxes between 75 and whatever the highest in the summer is. Usually like 80, which is kind of high. 84, I've seen it hit. But uh, depending on the species, it doesn't have a problem. The SPS yeah. got used to it after the first year. I had like you. Yeah. I had I had Scolimosa down here. They didn't like it, <laughs> but but like the acros, bird's nest, the easier, like even Pavona, easier encrusting corals didn't have a problem. They actually do better in the cold. Like when it gets hot, I have murder on my hands. No, oh, yeah, really, eh? And no chiller. Yeah. Huh? What do you guys like? What do you guys usually keep your tanks temperature at anyway? Uh, right at like 78 is yeah. where I'd see mine. I just checked mine. Mine's hitting about 79 right now. And that's well, one. I'll shock one you. Meter on, one meter on. The main tank, the big tank in the yeah. winter, I let it drop to 75, 70. The lowest it hits 75 because in the summer, I let it kind of change. I'm trying to change it with the seasons. Oh, yeah. Like I'll have I'll have the temperature change slowly in the winter. And then in the spring, I let it raise up gradually. Yep. Because you figure in, in the ocean, fish aren't the same temperature every day. So, yeah, true. Especially when, you know, I feel like it's such a great body of water, though, that the, the swings are a lot different than what we see yeah. in our things, though. Right now, the temperature is 77. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, mine's about 79 going on 80. That's one heater running. It should it should be shut off by now. <laughs> See, mine's constantly on, constantly on, but I have a window right next to my tank that I always have open just to help maintain that pH. Nigel says, if you live in Ireland, you need a heater. <laughs> I wish I lived in Ireland. Not if you need not if you need Nigel's heater. <laughs> I, I don't wonder how cold heat. it gets. I wonder Oscar. how cold it gets. Oscar's I, asking, if you uh, run a chiller deep? Now, Oscar. I have a chiller. Oddly enough, I have a chiller sitting right here that's been sitting in my basement for at least four years. I should pair it up with the calcium reactor because I think they're like good buddies. <laughs> yeah, they just collect the dust, good dust collectors. Or what? I I don't run the chiller only because the chiller I can't put it outside and it was kicking all the heat into the room. So oh. what I started doing is. I run the HVAC to keep the room temperature at a steady temperature so that the tank heater doesn't have to cut on as much. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that chiller is murder on your electric bill also. Oh, <laughs> I've never owned one, never used one, never owned one. Yeah, I think it's easier to control the room temperature than to control the tank temperature. Yeah. Especially I, I, when you have multiple, heat, uh, multiple tanks because... <laughs> Most of these tanks don't have heaters, um, only the delicate. Like I have some like uh, Native American, like killifish, which I can let go down to a certain temperature. Then I have certain saltwater tank that I can let go down. But yeah, it, dep it depends on what you keep, Oscar. Definitely look at if you're going to keep delicate coral like acros or uh, Aiken, even Aikens I've seen react real they're real like fussy. They grow really slow and they easily piss off. <laughs> yeah. easily. I remember when I had my 220 and I had the basement sump uh, set up, man, I had a hard time keeping that tank regulated. The temperature, I don't know, because my basement was a lot cooler, right? Than the upstairs of the house. So now that my, my uh, life support system is right behind here on the main floor, it has the same temperature all the time. So I find it very, 
is so much easier to keep the same temperature in that tank. But when I had it in the basement, I had like, uh, I'd cover it up with like styrofoam just to keep the, like, <laughs> just to keep it in. And some of that white, when I'm not around later, I'm nobody's going to see it. So just cover it up and it kept help keep the heat inside the tank just in the salt alone. Yeah. That was a real pain in the ass. Yeah. Hey, Sean, so you I, run two? Sorry? You run two heaters in your tank too? Yep. Yeah, I've got them just set up to an inkbird controller though. So, I mean, they both just kick on when they need to. So I I did think of something actually the other day while I was driving and I was like, you know, I kind of want to bring that up. And I hate to do this because I, I hate advertising for companies and everything. But at the same time, um, uh, right. Have you guys looked at uh, the new Pro Max from Waterbox? Yeah, I didn't get a lot of information on it. So, uh, hello, contender for Neptunian and Cade. Aluminum frame, PVC press board. They the tanks are anywhere between 190 gallons and was it 320 gallons? Can you pull one up? Can we check it? Yeah, let's, let's check it. Yeah, I just I the water boxes are really cool, really nice. I just never myself ever had one or ever thought of getting one. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've got a 130.4 and I like it, but my biggest complaint was the dang stand. And now that they're coming out with an aluminum stand, I'm like, wow. Yeah. All right. All right. I really, I'm really not a fan of those woods, those, those manufacturer stands. I'm an old fashioned steel or aluminum guy, just only because it lets me sleep at night. <laughs> like, Okay. Hey, D from Brooklyn Farm by Reef Bees. Reef, going to be good stream. Controller, shout out to all the reefers watching everybody. Please, safe. Bronx kid. What's up, Bronx? That's my boy, Johnny Martinez. Oh, yeah? We got to see what you running, Johnny, because yeah. I know you constantly working on the tank stuff. I got to see. We got to get some pictures of your tank, Johnny. Get Johnny on here. I'm telling you. Johnny, right. come on. Don't be scared. I've got it shared, Ryan. Okay. Shout out to the Bronx. Yeah, this is insane. They all these different sizes, different lengths and stuff. I mean, seven grand for a three hundred and twenty gallon tank is is a bit up there. But then watch what happens if you click that. Well, it depends Boom. on it depends on the tank too. I mean, or the mic. how it seems is it is it you know what are the, what is the bracing like? I mean, I don't even look at the stands because That's they a, try to throw all the plumbing and everything in there. The plumbing's not a thousand dollars worth of plumbing. No, but it's it's pretty legit. They redid the feet and they you know, they're using all their same plumbing and everything, but it's yeah. it's kind of cool, you know. It's all aluminum, yeah. which I really really like. The only thing I don't like is that it's still a center weir. I wish that they would have switched it out and gone coast to coast. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the one downfall. I mean, if I'm going to run a 300 gallon tank, I want to coast to coast. That's a big tank to try and move everything into there. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. And I'm and I'm really a more of a fan of the ghost overflows. I'm even though yeah. I have an old tank, I don't I don't want that box in the middle anymore. Yeah, no. like that, I, I did the Hulk, right? Everything's hit in the wall. There is no workflow box. It just has the weird. You're good to go. It's a much cleaner look. That's what I'm thinking. They they lost with this. Yeah, but thirty inches deep, just like the Cades and the Neptunians, which is huge. It gives you a ton of room for Aquascape. Yeah. Um, this well, for is the a, box too. Yeah, <laughs> that's the room for the box. Feature, removable weir teeth for cleaning. Yep. So that's a nice little upgrade that they put into them now. But uh, you know they've got in cabinet ventilation. I mean that's a big one. A lot of people have a lot of humidity build up and everything that just deteriorates oh. their cabinets. Especially so, all you, know, you can mount those fans. You can mount fans on those vents too. It's amazing how much those power supplies will heat up under there. Yep. Oh yeah. This right here. This is what caught my attention most of ah. all. They okay. Have Yep, built-in control center in there. I saw that and I was like, "All right, water box. All right, you've got my attention." Yeah, that's nice to have. You know, is so now, is that that comes with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's standard. Uh, and now, is that system for that oh, price? Is that with the sump? Is that like a custom yeah. sump to that fan? It's everything. Because I would imagine you had to fit it in there with the control center in there too. Yeah, so it's it's sump, it's an independent ATO box, which I think is just one of their like clear fives or whatever. Um, but yeah, sump, plumbing, tank, stand. Oh, and the stand comes fully assembled. You don't have to put it together. 
So no oh. worrying about unlevel doors and everything. I, it's just was pretty nifty. Do they have built levelers on their feet, or do you still have to level it? Yourself? It looks like it from the picture. Yeah. It looks like those look like levelers right there. Yeah, it has levelers. Yeah, but I don't think they're self leveling. Yeah. I think and these ones you actually have to crawl under there and get, which is really a pain in the butt with the water box. Yeah, they put like forty feet on those stupid things. I mean, it probably took me four hours to level my one thirty. Lovely feet. Yeah, that's well, definitely uh, <clears throat> a little note. To, a little note to guys out there. Since we're talking about levelers, I know Johnny in the Bronx, me and Brooklyn people, if you have your tank and it's not on the ground floor, levelers will not always help you because we're on wood floors. That's something to keep in mind. Yeah. If you scape your tank, and I found this out the hard way. I just did a 120 for a kid. If you scape your tank all and heavy on one side, you will see a shift. Like you definitely have to take that under consideration. That's a good pointer. That is a good pointer. Yeah, it'll eventually. It's good. Sink. It's great to have those levelers, though. You absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I wish I had them on the old tank. Do they have it? So, because you know, when your tank is full and you really want to say you want to re-level it a little bit, do they have a spot where you can actually put a wrench on? You know, so you can wrench it to give that extra force, mm -hmm. or just finger tighten. Like you know, what they, these oh. have the things so you can put the wrench on them. Okay, good. They do have that. Okay, oh that. yeah, they have the. Oh great, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad how, they thought of that. How are you ever going to get to the middle one? When that tank is on there and that thing is full, I promise you, you are not getting those middle feet. I have tried. It does not work. <laughs> the middle no, one you probably won't have that much problem with, though. Will you adjust any of the outside ones, and it'll change the height of the whole tank, which in turn pulls on those middle ones. Promise you, on a wood floor, it's a pain in the butt. That's what I went through. It is, man. But Especially was, in these old houses. Yeah. What I was liking about it, though, is this right here. This little line accommodate all major controllers, drivers, and dosers. Now, their their grammar's a little off because they're missing a comma. But at the same time, that they, they grabbed my attention because I was like, okay, if that's the case, that's got to be pretty deep then. Because if you guys, anybody who uses any of the Apex stuff and the doses, yeah. you, you know, those things are thick. So if this yeah. is just to fit those, that's super impressive. Yeah, it can definitely accommodate a lot of gear. Mm -hmm. Well, they have the. You can probably use the plumber's wrench. You know the extended plumber's wrench, and it'll yeah. fit around that fine. Yeah, you might be able to get that in there. They're pretty. They're pretty narrow. Who worries about the metal one? You know, <laughs> until you see a crack or something. <laughs> yeah, the crack will go down the middle. That frame will take the weight. You guys can't tell me that doesn't look sharp and white, though. Yeah, I, I like white. I like I, the white. I they really. Need, they need yeah. the green collection. Cause you know what, black is gonna show everything. My my stand is black. The minute water spills on it, you're wiping it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like the green. I like Ryan's green, actually. Exactly. Yeah, but it's glass. He cheats. He can just wipe his off. Exactly. Well, I'm cleaning the tank glass. I clean the glass below too. Well, and this is all PVC coated, so it's not like painted or anything. So most right. stuff can roll right off of it too. You're gonna be able to do the same thing as you would if it were glass. Yeah, fine. I could take off if I want to change it a year later. I can just the change. Thing it. Yeah, the thing that I'm trying to find on here that I didn't see was Did actual dimensions of the tanks, though. I thought that was up top. No? No, it gave it the size, but not the actual dimensions. So now. Where... Oh, no. And these guys have a special. Johnny's tanks a quarter inch off the floor. I know. <laughs> that could be a problem, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you don't have neighbors on the. I'm not seeing it. I was just looking to see because I know that they have a specific thing on here. Um, like for the actual specs of all the tanks, but I'm not seeing it. I mean, if if just off of guessing, I would say that their smallest one, that 190 gallon, that's yeah. still got to be a six foot tank. At 30 inches deep and everything, that's got to be a six foot tank. It's got to be. It's so... If you're going all the way up to 320, then eight, eight or nine feet. Oh, we got reef builders on here tonight. <laughs> unless it's third, unless it's 30 inches, 30 inches or more deep, which it doesn't well, look like. They are 30 inches deep. Okay, so it's probably eight to nine feet. Yeah, now, I would say nine feet probably if it's three yeah. and change. Yeah, it's hot. I'm making it tonight, reef builders. What's up? An accident. So now here's a question. Do they have a 
cover on that overflow because I yep. definitely need a screen top. So it's got a glass cover that goes over it. Because right. if anything goes into that overflow, I got to reach over 30 inches of tank to get it out. It's not happening, bro. Mm. I'm short arm. <laughs> I'm not a tall guy like Ryan. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's <laughs> a glass a and it's a smoked glass. They're actually really cool. I really like it on that 130.4. Um, yeah. With these, though, getting a top for them is a pain in the butt because you actually have to get one of the ones with all the extra pieces in it. And it's just a lot more cutting. Like if you're going to do a DIY kind of screen, um, you can get a custom lid for them. Yeah. But I promise you guys, those things are expensive. D D D sells a nice kit. I use them quite a few. Quite That's often. what I use. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not that bad. It's not that bad unless you want to cut around the overflow, which isn't a big deal. This, yeah. one, right That's nice. this one right here, I, I had rushed just for a build and everything. This yeah. is 160 bucks. Laser printed. This is no, it's a CNC milled acrylic. See, now for that tank, 300, I would figure I probably want three sections or at least two sections because moving yeah. that crap is going to be a pain. Or if you just want to feed the tank and you just want to lift it up or acclimate something. But some of those guys are doing those 3D printed bolts where you can, if you cut a hole in your screen and you put the little uh, plastic bolts through it and you have a hole you have a port that you can oh, feed. That's cool. Mr. Mr. Salty Reef out of the UK he prints them and what he did on the bottom of the port pot or port hole there's a, a spot for feeding like if you want to put frozen food in there you put it in there and the fish can't get at it you have to pick through the small holes it's a pretty cool little setup wow yeah so producer reef here said or sorry fragile reefer said that the 320.7 is a seven foot tank that's a seven big foot. tank yeah that is you know, it took four of us to move my six foot tank. I can only imagine how much heavier that extra foot of glass is. Yeah. True. And they're not Euro braced or anything. So, yeah. Yeah, but those tanks are they're heavy. <laughs> oh, no, I know. My Cade is ridiculous. The Cade, so, the Cade too, has the reinforced bottom plate, right? That bottom is thicker. A little, a little. It's got a, a PVC cover on it and everything. Hmm. Uh, it, it's not much, though. So, yeah, I mean, Reef Builders makes a very, very, very valid point right there. I mean, I've got some super expensive fish, and those yep. lids, yeah, you know, they may be 400 bucks, but it'll pay for itself. itself. Yeah, I mean, what's the equivalent of that? One Achilles, one, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying. Dude, like, have you seen the prices of fish go up in the last couple of months? Do you really want to find your Achilles on the floor? No, <laughs> I would cry. Yeah, we don't want to talk about losing fish like that too. I just had that situation happen. I did. I got hooked up. I lost an Achilles, a Lamarck Angel, um, a yellow tang, a oh man, a, a blue tang, a blue hippo, and something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it was what like that. Which were the fish? How did you? What happened? They just jumped? Um, I had them at a friend's house. They were being quarantined and their power popped on those tanks and they were gone for a couple of days. Yeah. They just died. I don't know if it got too cold or they ran out of oxygen in the water or what. I, I don't have a clue. That's but, you, you know, hey, that ties back into our controller and monitoring conversations and stuff. Because I asked them, I was like, dude, with all of the options that are out there, how did you not have some form of monitoring on it? How did you not have a CJ pump that said, oh, hey, it lost Wi-Fi so that you knew to go check it or have somebody check it? Or how come your Apex wasn't hooked up to it so you had some form of alert letting you know that you lost power? Yeah. Or, you know, anything. Like, there was nothing there, which blew my mind. Exactly. And well, you know, it's, it's, yeah. there's so many different controllers on the market now. We keep seeing them, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's time to sometimes take that jump, right? Yeah, but you know what's funny? I had the Apex probably seven years now. Yeah. And I never had that notification that if the Wi-Fi went down, I would get a message. I all really right. didn't know that that was in there. I really didn't know it. So now, yeah, let's, all you, of my, let's you know as well if it just connects through the internet. I had it happen today. Yeah, it notifies me every hour. So now yeah. my wife's like, "Oh, what's that noise?" It sends me a notice, and I know it's still on the it's still on the network. Yeah. It sounds like a Star Trek thing. But with all the smart controllers now, that's one of the questions that I'm I'm sending out to. All the manufacturers, like, yeah. if they lose connection, will I get a notice that it's not communicating? Yep. So I know for a fact that the uh, controls will. 
Yeah, those are all set up through your internet and everything. I mean, they run over a Wi-Fi network, but they're not connected to the internet, but they'll still send alerts through the internet. So if something happens, as long as you've got internet access, it's going to send you a message. Yep. Yeah. Which yeah. I think the Apex is supposed to do that as well. Yeah. Controller these days, like, man, like, the controllers, like, I'm addicted to my iPad. I look at mine all the time at work. I'm always like, <laughs> monitoring because right now I've been dosing Calc Blaster. And I've been watching that baby, right? So I'm always it's on there. Okay, oh, okay, pH is getting up there where I need it. Okay, so now I'm just gradually keep just a few more mil a day until I get exactly where I want, right? But it's been great because when you have your pH probes in there and they're you know you're monitoring, it's going to make things. Hopefully, you don't have a big failure, right? So I'm trying to skip that. But it's definitely this day and age not having a controller, you know. Like, or at least some form of monitoring lets you know like the major failures. Yeah. Um, Heat, for instance, okay. Yeah. So the extreme STCs that CJ has, the they're kind of ugly, but they're awesome pumps. Like they're super powerful and everything, but they've got a temperature probe in them, and they're connected up through your Wi-Fi. So yeah. if power goes out, you're gonna get an alert from the system that says, "Hey, you don't have Wi-Fi connection to this." Yeah. Um, if your temperature gets too hot, it's gonna send you an alert saying, "Hey, your tank's too hot." I mean, that's two hundred bucks. Like, yes, you can go out and you can go buy a Control 2 for 200 bucks and it's going to do you the same thing. But if you don't want a Control 2, like you have uh, an Apex up or whatnot, it's another little safety net to have, just to have another form of monitoring on there. Yeah. Well, let's let us let's talk about that too, because Ryan, now you're dosing the caulk, so you're monitoring the temperature, you're monitoring pH. Now, you had the little thing, you had the incident last week where you had a lot of people come over and you saw the pH spike, and as soon as you sent me that that yeah. message, I says, "How many people do you have in the room?" <laughs> well, it's like so, it spiked down. It went down in the sevens pretty deep. Like I have been, I had, you know, I got my graph usually staying around eight point one, eight point two, but I've been trying to raise it to my eight point three, eight point four. So I had my daughter's birthday on the weekend. So there was like I don't know how many people were here, like ten or whatever. So I so I checked on it. Went jumped on my pH. I wanted to see what was going on. Boom! It dropped right down to seven. I'm like, holy smokes! And then when people started to leave, you could see it gradually going back up. But it goes to show you having all those, you know, you know, mouth breathers in the house. Like my tank is just absorbing that. You know what CO2. I mean? Window CO two <laughs> lowers your temp, your pH. Yeah, I Usually I don't have that many people, right? Never really thought. And then that day, because you know the dosing kelp, and I just I just wanted to check. Like, holy smoke! Look at that spike! It just went down. I'm like, there it goes to show you. So next time when people come over, I'll figure out, you know, open some windows, a door for a bit. You know. Now, did you did you get an alert when the I pH have, went down? Oh, yeah, I have it set up because right now, because I'm dosing calc and all that, <laughs> 8.4, 8.5, it's going to let me know right away. And I have it dropping. If I have anything that drops below, like, 8, it lets me know right away as well. So you have to add a line for everybody and learn from my mistake because I've been using caulk for many years and I still effed up my alkalinity the other because since my tank is in the dining room, it's yeah. constantly fluctuating towards mm -hmm. a window. It's about a three point window. So when you're dosing, your computer will say, hey, your pH went down, dose part one, and yeah. that can kill you. Because then when the people leave, your tank goes in a spike, and now it, it does the opposite. Now you're at 8.3 or 8.2, and yep. that's a spike in one day. Yep, exactly, exactly. And throughout the day, your corals are, you know, they're photosynthesizing, they're growing, right? And then at night, you know, they're not photosynthesizing anymore, so that causes a fluctuation as well. You know what I mean? But it goes to show you having that many people in your house, what it can do to your tank. Yeah. You know? And other thing is too, people smoke in your house, it causes an issue. If you have a wood uh, fireplace or a stove, it causes an issue. <laughs> I live in Canada, there's not as many leaves, everything's falling off now. So there's most, more CO2 in the air, that causes an issue. Everything oh, wow. An issue. So this, I'm trying to get over this issue by running calc. And, and, and running calc can be dangerous sometimes because you can overdose your tank and fry everything. But that's myself, like I'm with my tank every day and I'm always watching it and I'm monitoring it. So I'm pretty sure hopefully, you know, knock on wood, I'll be successful because everything I'm finding I'm getting a lot more coral growth right now. The coral and algae really spiked up, and it's showing a good, a positive result so far. Plus, I've been running. I'm still running my calcium reactor, but I haven't turned down that it's just working for me because the calc is doing everything right now, pretty much that I need. So, 
The caulk, the caulk is excellent. It's just a lot of horror stories with overdosing the caulk. But I'm, but I'm dosing my caulk washer with my uh, dosatronic, right? So I have a program that's dosing six times a day, I think at 500 milliliters at a time. That's what, because uh, I've been watching, adding a little bit of milliliters all the time to get it where I need to see how my tank is working, right? So with my dosatronic, I know, you know, it's Wi-Fi compatible. It lets me know how many, how much I'm dosing a day, how many times it's dosing. So I have control of it. It's not running off an ATO when you know my tank water evaporating. The ATO you know, fills up, doses the kelp. Because I you know, like I evaporate a lot of water in a day, and I don't want to overdose kelp. So this way, just by using the dosatronic, it's definitely helping running it off that pump. So what is it? Uh, Reefer Reeves here brought up the ion director from GHL. So what do you guys think? Which which company is gonna get to market first? Are we talking the Mastertronic, the Ion Director, or the Zepta and Abex? Hmm. I'm trying. I'm trying to find that uh, for you there. No, oh, he was just asking. I don't know because I, I'm not sure what their marketing strategy is now. We're going into yeah. the holidays. I rather them take a while to get it to the market and get through the bug phase than to try to rush it to the market and then have the user go through the bug phase. You know. Yeah. Well, I see some people running it. Well, yeah, but you're you're beating my question here, though. The question is, which one's going to get to market first? You think the, the, market announced. the Mastertronic is that one you're saying? No, well, the Mastertronic, the Ion Director, and the Apex and the Zepta. So they're all three different things that all do basically the same exact thing. Master, I think Mastertronic will be here before all of them. Their pre-orders are out. Mm -hmm. I think they'll be here first. Yeah, but like you know, like Sean, the pre-order versus them getting it to you can be a big thing. <laughs> you know, they love taking pre-orders, but then you're waiting for like weeks for it to come. Or well, years. Can leave a, things that can leave a, a bad taste. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting. I like GHL stuff. I really do. I yeah. do like the price of GHL stuff. GHL is more for the programmer. That is really customizable. I like my buddy's a big programming geek. Shout out to you, Bernard. <laughs> he's he's a programmer. He's loved the GHL since we saw it a couple of years ago. But those are for guys that know code. Not saying that it's not user friendly for those that don't, but it's really built to be customizable for people that can go in and change code so i think that really high-end market is going to love that because they've been around for a while now yeah once they finally release it though that's the problem yeah well they've up. been around for a while <laughs> hey sean you want to pull up the screen while we're talking about it maybe we can check it out yeah, I, I see a few different reefers posting about it but i don't see too much about it to be honest with you I mean, speaking of reef builders, I just pulled up their stuff on it. Like, I couldn't remember right off the top of my head what the ion director was. Yeah. So, so reef, reef builders right now, he's saying he doses 12 milliliters minimum of calc on a 600 gallon system. No, 12 milliliters a minute. It's yeah, a, a minute? minute? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's a 600 gallon tank, though. Yeah, I believe it. Because I'm like 600, like, I'm giving her. Well, if he's got a heavy load too, if you got a heavy load yeah. and your tank is consuming that alkalinity and calcium, yeah, it's just you got to be real. I know I'm like a broken record. It's just when you deal with the caulk, it just throws your your parameters off so quick. If it's overdosed, yeah, you're always better off underdosing it than overdosing it. So Sean's got it pulled up here. He's got a refilter siphon up right now. Yeah, I was just checking it out real quick. I mean, it's cool. It's got a control yeah. there. Potassium, what is that? Nitrate, and I can't even see the other thing. Um, I mean, it looks cool. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. But, that, I mean, the sad thing is, this picture right here, these three pieces of equipment, I mean, you're two Gs. Easy right yeah. there. Is it run by probes or the same thing? Is it taking samples as well? I would assume it's got oh, they have probes. They have probes. They have probes? They have probes. They were trying to come out with the testing system that everybody else came out with years ago. They just never got that final piece of the puzzle in. I mean, like I said, it looks cool, though. It just... Looks like NASA. Yeah. I would love people to come in the house and see that. They'd be like, oh, my God, what is that? That's high yeah. tech. Man. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, fragile. I'm gonna agree. The the hydros or the controls definitely are the most user friendly. It's super easy. I mean, everything's programmed within three steps. 
Well, we got to be honest too. The first thing people look at is the price. Price is intimidating. Do I really want to go out and spend two Gs? I'm going to spend what I spend on the tank on the controller. Yeah. Well, and as, if you're just getting in, though, um, you, it's already an expensive enough hobby to get into. So, yeah, the good word of advice is, is if you're just starting out, don't buy new. Buy something used. Find something that, you know, some other reefer that's getting into the hobby has or whatnot and take your time to get into it. Or plan ahead and buy your pieces one by one. You know, take your time, buy it one time rather than buy the cheap. Like people go out and try to buy the cheapest thing, cheapest thing, and then you end up replacing. I'm guilty of that too. Oh yeah. Going out and trying to cut corners, and you end up replacing it down the road. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Let's see. Um, I did see an interesting comment in here. There's a lot. Uh, trying to get them on here. Yeah, we've got a lot of questions tonight. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm watching them here. Where are you at, Sean? The one that I saw was uh, whether or not I believe... Oh, here it is. So do you think corals consume elk during the day or night? Um, both, but predominantly during the day? Yeah. But your pH drops at night. Because they're photosynthesizing, right? So they're growing. Yeah. But your pH drops at night. So usually I dose it at night. Where did I see that uh, 731. That's it was halfway crazy. through. Yeah. 731. That would be a, that would be an interesting study too. Like so I show you with my Alcatronic where it actually pulls. There's like, as soon as the light shut off for about another hours and a half ish, it, there's still a draw and then it just kind of levels out. And then about 45 minutes or so after my lights kick back on, it really starts to draw. But there's still a minimal drop throughout the night. I mean, it's not much. It's like 0 0.01, but it's still dropping. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there are some people that say that their tank draws more at night than it does during the day. I mean, I personally haven't witnessed it, and my Alcatronic sure as hell doesn't show that. But I'm not saying that it's necessarily wrong. I think corals are weird, and they just kind of do their own thing. Well, here's a question, too. Do you have a refugium on your tank? I do. So now photosynthesis takes place at night and in the day, but mm -hmm. the plants utilize the oxygen, so that may lower your levels too. Mm -hmm. It's so many factors. Yeah. So many factors. I would love to have a planted reef tank. I know a lot of people have tried to do that just by the nature of the fish. <laughs> it's hard to do it. If anybody out there has got a planted reef, leave a comment below because that would throw the whole game off like focusing on plants hey d you want, see, you want to see my water box i've got an ova infestation like it's really, <laughs> it's a reef tank right now hey it's life life finds a way I'm, I'm about to pull it all and do a flux rx treatment on it just to get rid of some of the hair algae and everything oh that's the easy way out you gotta man it out you gotta <laughs> man it out but if I get rid of it, then I can just make sure to keep my nutrients in check and not dump them like I did. You might, or it might be in the rock. It may come back. <laughs> I mean, there is truth to that, too. I took I took two of these rocks out of the nano tank, and uh, it went down for a while. I mean, I, I did dose a little bit of iodine. I dosed a little bit of iodine, thinking that I was seeing like a Boreopsis start. Mm. And then it kind of leveled up. It's so it's so tricky because you really never know quite well what the cause of these swings are. You're just kind of feeling your way out and hoping <laughs> that you can address the issue. Yeah. All right. So battle is our quick comment. Alcatronic and Mastertronic, do it. You will not be mad at yourself other than your wallet being extremely light. Um, I love my Alcatronic. Word of advice, though, put it somewhere where it will not keep you up at night. <laughs> but you think I, it's dude, I noticed it at 6 o'clock this morning. Like, I finally got into bed, and I was finally going to sleep after driving through the night and everything. And <laughs> I wanted to do a test, and I have it attached to a wall that's one of my bedroom walls. It was vibrating the wall enough that it kept me awake. Really? <laughs> and 13 minutes is how long it takes my Alcatronic to do a test. I don't even notice mine anymore. Well, that's because yours is in a room. You're not like sleeping it. in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it going off every hour. It's a studio area, so yeah, I guess because I don't sleep in here. So yeah. 
Well, it, you want to hear funny? I was watching. I was watching another YouTube uh, video here with SG Bearded Aquarius. He's doing an interview with Epic Saltwater Tanks, and every couple of minutes, I was hearing the guys all could try to go off, and I thought it's Sean. Really? <laughs> like, mm. and I kept saying, "Up, oh, he's testing again." <laughs> It does happen. I didn't realize it was that loud until I was watching this video and I could hear his test going off. Mm -hmm. And I've got the silencer kit on mine too. Like it's not loud by any means. It's just, it's a hum, but it's a noticeable hum. Like it's at a weird decibel. It just kind of draws your attention. At least you know it's working. Right? <laughs> you know yeah. it's running. Right. So uh, Amy, uh, yeah. asked a question about chasing numbers. I think I can answer that one for all of us. Don't. Find out where your tank works and just let it ride. Just keep it there. Don't chase numbers. You chase it, you really do start screwing everything up. You got chase, buddy. No, I'm just... Let's see. That'll give you a heart attack. I my numbers. numbers give you a heart attack. Myself, like, yeah, I may not chase numbers. Like, right now, I'm chasing PAs. Like, it's like my thing this past couple weeks. But you should, you know, you, know, you don't really have to be chasing PAs either. But I'm really trying to, like, pull the best I can with my coral growth as possible. But, uh, like anything else, PO4, as soon as I keep them around those numbers I want them, I don't really chase. Yeah. You know, the irony is that we put so much work into the numbers. On the freshwater side of the hobby, you ask somebody what their pH is, they couldn't tell you. And some of these guys have the most exquisite, like the guys at ADA, they have the most exquisite CO2 systems and, and computers and things hooked to their tank, but they don't test it half as much for the levels that we test for yeah no i agree let's see now red red raven also says okay targeted to all of us how easy is it or right. simple is it to keep saltwater tanks like 10 20 gallon tanks with sand and fake rock like you're saying right off the back fake rock I mean, no you want it to crash if you're running you want <laughs> you want biological activity because the biological mass of your tank is helping your filtration. So you can have a fish only tank with rock and not have coral, but you need the living bacteria in the sand. You need the living bacteria in the rock to maintain your, your balance. And the good thing about a 10 or 20 gallon tank is you can do water changes. The bad thing is when things go bad in a 10 and 20 gallon tank, they're going to go bad really quick. So real quick. have your five gallon bucket or 10 gallon water change bucket ready <laughs> so you can regularly change your water on a regular. Regularly on regular. That was double. Oh, we lost. Brian. He jumped. <laughs> So who else we got here? For a big system, Battle OCR. For a big system, though, it's the same as the Apex or not so much different. Cost-wise. Cost -wise. He's talking about setting up all the monitoring and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's relative. But at the same time, here, here's a question that I ask everybody, too, though. Like, time is the most important resource that anybody has. You're not getting any more of it. So yes, comparatively priced, they're about the same. Quality price or quality, they're about the same and everything. Like you can find the nitpicky things there and show the differences and stuff, but comparatively they're the same. But at the end of the day, you know, with a hydro system, three steps and you're done. With an apex, you damn near need a master's degree in coding to really be able to do anything. My That's time awesome. is more to me than going through to learn all that stuff, then having to go and program it as well. So I mean it's just it's a really a matter of preference there but i'm telling you i love coral view i love the stuff that they have all the products that they bring to market and everything so that's my go-to and with all the stuff that i've seen about net or like the apex like there's no point so i will take simpler and functional versus more complex and hard i mean at the end of the day it's the no i'll, I'll save that comment for uh, for another show <laughs> but, uh, yeah we, it, it's definitely a, a heated debate on my end there. I love my Apex, but I'm not going to lie to you. Their first couple of months was a, a rough marriage <laughs> because I was going on the forums. I mean, I got a degree in computer science. And let me tell you, I was getting frustrated. But when it works, it works. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love it. And they were groundbreaking with, you know, control. But... It's come a long way, and and technology changes. 
Yeah. So I mean, your I, goal I, is to make things easier. And, and as you go forward, programming and things should be kind of seamless. You really don't want to sit and program. You want to plug and play, have your phone see it or have whatever your device is, see it and have it work. Oh, 100 percent. Let's see. Um, go to Jacob. Is there a recommendation for intro into dosing? Um, dosing is a tough one. Don't Enter him to dosing. Yeah, I mean, I can't really think of anything in particular that would be a good explanation for it. I mean, just do your research, figure out what you're going to dose, what size water volume you have, what whether you're going to do it manually or if you're going to do it with dosing pumps. Make sure that they're calibrated every single month at the least. Check the calibration on your dosing. Start small, work your way up. I mean, that's really the rough and dirty intro into dosing. And before you dose, test your water because... When you first start a tank, nine out of 10, you don't need to dose yet. Like people buy a tank, set up a system, and they automatically start dosing before they even know what their levels are. So one of the keys is before you dose, like Sean said, know what your levels are and know what your goal is. Because if you don't have a goal, then what are you dosing for? Mm -hmm. Like a lot, of the, a lot of the levels that we strive for, you can accomplish with a water change. I mean, with like the... Reef Pro and the Coral Pro salts, some of these salts have such high levels of alkalinity and they're especially chemistry to accomplish certain target parameters. So test your parameters before you dose anything. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Sin made a point saying stability is key. Absolutely. You know, don't chase the numbers. Just keep your tank stable. Things will be a lot happier. Um, let's see. I'm not sure. So Reef Builder is talking about the single piece of equipment worth 2K is the Deltec Twin Tech Vacuum Reactor. I'm not even sure what that is. Now I'm going to have to look that up because I'm. So, yeah, sure. let's see if we can pull that up. So now the vacuum reactor. Now we got a lot of hardware on these tanks. A lot of hardware, people. I'm old fashioned. I want the tank to be as independently run as possible. My theory is the more room for more room and margin for error that you place on your tank, the more likely you're going to have an issue. But if it helps you get to where you want to be, to each his own. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yep, the Apex is a, a, a tough marriage. It's a love and a hate, but you love to hate it and you hate to love it but it has run my tank for years now. <laughs> so I do like my Apex. Wow. I mean, this looks to be interesting. I'm kind of thinking I might actually really, really have to look into these. Um, I mean, it's got CO2 alarms and stuff on it, which is kind of cool. Can you still bring it up? I can't, unfortunately, until Ryan gets back in. Let me see. You have now, you should have the share screen down there. Well, yeah, oh, I can, the phone. It, but then he's got to bring it oh, in. Oh, he's got to prove it. All right. Well, let's see. So it has its own probes built into it. Uh, it's got some cool little features. <laughs> You're so right. Apex can be a pain. Yes. Um, let's see. Hey, what's up, Candles Reef? Yeah, the, the main, the main, my whole thing with the tank, and I get a lot of tanks, like right now, so that people know I'm in the process of integrating Google Home into everything, which has been quite an experience this week. <laughs> So I have tanks that uh, my main tank runs on the Apex and the Apex also runs two smaller tanks. And then I have a fish bit controller, which they're not even in business anymore. And that still runs on Wi-Fi. They were one of the first uh, companies to develop a wireless pH probe, like the pH probe and the temperature probe are wireless and, and run over the network. So I have those. I have all these tanks and I'm integrating them into uh, Google Home so I can see them from my iPad or if I travel, they have the cameras. So one of the things for the future of all these companies 
is the smart home. We got to look at the smart home because the smart home runs my thermostat, which in turn controls the temperature in a tank. So if I can control the thermostat, do I really need to control the heater? It's just a lot of control. Man. We're adding more. So how they all speak to each other is really important now. Yeah, yeah. there's got to be all sorts of integration. They, and that's a lot of things where a lot of people have some issues there. I think that was that was next on the list in the prototype to Coral View. I think they were integrating Alexa and Google Home integration into the uh, the Hydros. If I remember right, that was one of the things he said was coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Internet of All Things and stuff is getting worked into it, and Alexa and Google are getting worked on. Um, I don't know. The integration is going is insane now. Uh, Ryan is still trying to get back on. <laughs> he got kicked out. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> um, hey, Google, let Ryan back in. <laughs> hey, Alexa, connect Ryan. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't answer. So those are all the toys. What do you guys control in your tanks? What's the most important things that you guys are looking to control? We can talk about controllers till we're blue in the face. We can put a lot of emphasis on what companies we like. What's the most important things to you? Is it pH? Is it temperature? Is it dosing? Dosing, we, we spoke a lot about dosing. And when you're dosing, it is important to control pH and other things. But is that going to drive your decision on which unit you get? Hey, Google. Turn cube lights off. Here's what I found on the web. Oh, Z, it's not going to work. There you go. Technology. So now you're worried about technology, and then it goes south. <laughs> right? So, uh, Anthony, I was just reading your stuff, talking about an Apex or a Hydros and a calcium reactor. Uh, get a control and a calcium reactor because that's going to cost you about the same as just the Apex. I'm well, just if saying. You get a calcium reactor, I definitely recommend a controller. Oh, yeah. Even if you have a pinpoint control, I mean, a pinpoint pH controller. Oh, yeah, the milk. Yeah. You have to have a controller because until you get that calcium rat, I'm scared. Mine's been sitting here for years because I've heard nightmares of big, big tanks just having a slip in that in that calcium reactor. So I can't imagine running it without a controller. Do you have a controller for that calcium reactor? I was going to add the probe and add it to the Apex. Mm -hmm. The only reason I didn't have it put in there is because it's a really big reactor and mm -hmm. I kind of have to reconfigure everything down there to make room for it. <laughs> so so I'm I'm kind of in the middle of that now. And then yeah. at the same time I did the OD with the with the calculator. Yeah. So now I'm like okay trying to bring my alkalinity back down. So Jake makes an interesting point saying that the most important thing he likes to control is evaporation top off. Um mm -hmm. yeah having that automated and controlled that is probably, I would have to agree, the most singular important thing on a reef tank is making sure that that salinity stays balanced and that you're keeping everything right there. Because, I mean, let's be realistic. Everything else you can dose. You know, it's going to have swings. It's going to have some fluctuations. Depending on consumption there and everything, you can still hand dose that pretty easy. But doing your water top-offs by hand, I mean, that'd be a nightmare. Yeah, still doing some of them. <laughs> some of them I'm doing. I'm saying, that's... Mm. But that's another thing. I mean, that that's a really good point, too. We can automate the dosing really easily. I mean, there's a million auto top-offs on the market right now. But having it built in, so the water changes now, if I could do an automatic water change, I will feel like I have gone to heaven. <laughs> I've definitely pushed a button, take five gallons out, put five gallons in. Oh, man. You probably wouldn't have to dose as much. Yeah. Hmm. Jake's got six tanks daisy chained together with a gravity fed float valve for ATOs. That had okay. to have been a thought. <laughs> like that's uh wow. All right. Jake, I'd like to know whether you're using a float, are you using a level sensor, 
or a celluloid on that tank because I did a uh, I worked with a friend and we built a, a 280, 250, a 250 gallon tank against a better judgment. He used that float and he had it gravity fed and his saltwater tank became a freshwater tank because when working on the sump, he bumped that float and it stayed up. <laughs> I mean, it stayed down rather. Wow. So yeah, I like it. Are you using an optical sensor? And you, I, I hope to see what kind of redundancy you have. Well, Jake said it's all mechanical float. Hey. Okay. So hey, this, this, I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, Insane Reefer said his plans are to integrate two part to be able to dose in case his CR stop or their CR stops working while they're on vacation. Um, get an Alcatronic. Problem solved. It'll control your calcium reactor as well as make sure that everything's squared away. Um, that's the simplest thing that you can do. Plus, you can have remote monitoring. I mean, a lot of people are using that those uh, old JBO dosers, but you can easily overdose with them. Oh, I yeah. mean, if you're just setting it to do five mils every half hour or 150 mils every two hours or whatever it is it doesn't know when your tank has enough <laughs> it just keeps dosing <laughs> dosing and dosing and dosing oh red's talking about getting into seahorses no that's tough no. do your homework red i tried it i failed miserably i i traveled too much i couldn't do it and the way that they have to eat no well, if you can get the uh, the cultured ones, I hear they're easier to feed, but just what they have to be fed, uh, I don't know how you can do it if you travel. You can do it. You can do it. We have some at the aquarium now where we have our meetings. Uh, the Brooklyn Aquarium has two seahorse tanks. Well, actually, they have a big seahorse display, but in our meeting room, they have a 75-gallon seahorse tank. It's beautiful. But it's a labor of love. You definitely need a chiller, depending on where you are, because they don't like that heat. And feeding them is a mother. Yes. <laughs> they can like the trough set up and everything. They were getting them on really baby mice, tiny mice. They started eating and live hatched baby brine shrimp. Mm -hmm. Things with eyes. Things with eyes. The tanks always got to be clean. Oh my gosh! Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Doser, <laughs> Jabo Doser here. Candles Reef says Jabo Doser here. I lost my corals. Yes, that Jabo will keep dosing. If you're using a Jabo Doser, I will tell you dose minimal. Minimal for your tank. Underdose. See, that's the thing that gets minimal. Me. With that brand, I can see the return pumps. I can see the wave makers. I don't know if I could trust the dosing pump. I think the dosing pumps actually performed better than the wave makers. Like there's, I know uh, Rico, I know Rico's Reef. He has j -Bo, Well, he had, he probably uploaded now. Now he has the Alcatronic and all that stuff. But he had j -Bo dosers on his tank for years. I know a lot of people had them for years. But these are guys that are watching their tanks, though. No. So you can't, I leave down too much. I can't do that <laughs> kind of attention to them. So, I mean, you can probably get away with that. I know I had the, uh, the little Kimoa X1s. I loved them. They were awesome, except for the fact that I found that they went out of calibration probably every two weeks. And it wasn't every by a lot. Two weeks? Yeah, it wasn't a lot. It was very, very minimal, like maybe half a milliliter. But I was only dosing like 10 mils a day. So I was using them for the Triton method. Um, so when i started actually paying attention to what they were doing i was like damn i gotta calibrate these every like two weeks i don't know if it's the distance that they run or the, the triton reagent stuff or the triton additives that i was putting in or whatnot i don't i don't know but it was it was weird so if a, a higher end brand is having pumps that are doing that that's where i kind of be like yeah i don't know if i would trust those two guys well the kimura is easy to calibrate too you can use your app on the phone to calibrate it too can't you yes so, I mean, the Apex, I have nightmares calibrating those damn probes. So any any kind of, any doser needs to be calibrated. But uh, if you're not watching it, like, I see uh, one person, I didn't see who it was. I think the, the, the comment went up there really quick, and they said they test once a week. But if you're 
testing once a week, but dosing every day, that's not going to work out <laughs> because uh, within a, the span of a day or two, your pH can go from 7.8 to 8.3 and you won't know at what point it happened. Oh, yeah. It's like that, too. Depending on what you're like, how much you dose and stuff, it can really cause that real fast. Like my Alcatronic. Um, so the reagent ran out while I was gone on my trip and it shut it down. I kicked it back on today when I got home. My alkalinity was showing, well, it was like 7.43. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I got to bring this back, but let me go through this and make some adjustments. So I set it to register my tank as 10 gallons. It has been testing every two hours since I turned it back on and dosing just a small amount, just kind of bringing it back up. How much reagent do you use depending on like, like how much you're testing? Cause you're testing what every two hours. So yeah, right. how, much, how much are you going through reagent? So in one of the, like the Voss bottles, um, I use that as a dosing container with that. It probably uses like, I want to say probably eighth inch out of that bottle with every test. So, I mean, it uses a bit, but at the same time, when you're buying that stuff and you're mixing four to one, you get a lot of reagents and that Voss bottle that I have, it'll run four days at four hours uh, between each test. Oh, there's Ryan coming back. Ryan's in a a tinic yeah. mode. <laughs> Ryan, you're awfully blue Sorry, now. Guys. He's feeling blue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm He's a not smart. sure what happened with my, my internet connection dropped on me. Well, we kept it running. Yeah, I see it that. Kept, I'm amazing. I'm amazed that you're the host, but it kept running. Thank you, internet I gods. Know. I don't know if it's going to keep running in the background after we're done or not. The internet gods. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Anything <laughs> that can and will go wrong goes wrong. So all of you guys viewing, we're live and things happen. So we just go with the flow. This is the nature of the beast. Yeah, that's Murphy's law. Right. And just wow. like controllers, the internet can fail. <laughs> so, yep, exactly. It happens. Ryan, the question is, though, do you have the ability to still see the back room and bring people in and everything? Um, I've never used it on here before. Let me look. <laughs> I got another question. If your internet goes down, did it affect yeah, any I, of your I, tanks? Did it affect I your tank? Like, yeah, I just got my uh, alerts. Ah, down. Win, 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 win. Exactly. And we were just talking. exactly when the internet went down, like five minutes ago, ten minutes ago. And we were just talking about that. So anything that can and could go wrong will. And this is what we're talking about, like tank control. These are things that you have to take into consideration. If your internet goes down and you can't see your tank, what's your what's your controller going to do is your controller going to still function these are things that you want to look at when you're buying a controller and you want to test it you might even want to test it before you put it on your system you want to just put your settings into oh, exactly. it um I, I almost bought another replacement head for my apex just because my head is so old i wanted to buy another control head just to have it backed up so if something goes wrong i can swap it out but uh if you buy another controller, let's say GHI or something, set it up, put your settings into it, unplug it, see what it does, see if you get your notifications, see if you keep the settings. Yeah, exactly. It's good, good, good point. Ooh, ooh, I just saw something. Battle OCR are talking about how they don't think they've ever calibrated their probes. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Battle OCR, my probe's sure. saying 7.5, but my tank is 8.1 8 right now. I know for a fact. <laughs> oh, okay. I can, guys, I can still pull up people's uh, question. Nice. My shrimp's in my shark's mouth. I, saw. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that wasn't a, a, a good shrimp there. I hope it was food shrimp. Exactly. exactly. I'm actually really hoping one of our, our special, special guests can jump on here. Yeah, I can still invite people in. Scary. That's the only thing I, I'm scared about sharks. Like, I wanted to get a snowflake eel for the big tank because most of the corals in there, I know he's not going to mess with. My fish are pretty big. But yeah. then I'm going to wake up one morning and my favorite hawk fish will be in his mouth and I'll be really pissed off. 
Right. Um, how often should you calibrate the Neptune probes? Uh, well, they're like any probes. At least every what, like three months? I think yeah. it's what it is every three months. Yeah, I do. Mine, yeah. I do mine quite What's often. It cost you two bucks. And it doesn't take that long. No, it doesn't take that long to do. I mean, I like, I like, I still have a pH test kit. Not for nothing. I mean, I calibrate my probes. I have a, uh, I have a digital probe here it's not here i think i left it upstairs but i have a digital tester which will give me an immediate reading on all of the tanks just because i have fresh water and salt water yep. but probes go bad you never know they get out of calibration especially if you have them in salt water because they get salt creep on them oh exactly i keep right. i keep mine because i have my ph for my tank i got my ph for my calcium reactor so if i see anything wonky like get different weird readings coming in my calcium reactor it's time to uh calibrate them right or just pull it out and just put it into my main tank and see if it's the same ph reading that i'm getting from my other probe then i know they're both calibrated see i'm i'm totally fat kidding it up now we're talking about all this stuff and i'm like I, I need <laughs> an Oreo hey. hey what's up dave dave my is there what's yeah, up dave, dave, what dave, time okay. is it there geez he's losing a lot of sleep over there i know right let's see Dave, you're up late tonight, buddy. You're always up late when you got a late night. Oh, you're always okay. worried it's about something. It's during the day, right? It's two oh seven in the afternoon, there. Yeah, it's the opposite. Oh, okay. Going on day four, I haven't eaten them. <laughs> okay. Jeez. <laughs> Every tank needs an eel. Ugh. I don't know. I don't want to get bit. Well, it depends on the eel. What's that? I'm just saying, I don't like to put things in my tank that can bite me. What? I used to have a beautiful <laughs> dwarf lionfish, but my wife made me get rid of him when my son was born because she says, oh, he'll put his hand in there one day because my tank used to sit really low. I had a low stand, but oh, that was an awesome fish, man. Yeah. What do we got here? Uh, yeah, David says 2 p.m. on Sunday. 2 p.m., okay. And Amy King says, everybody, every tank needs an eel, dude. Every tank needs an eel. Amy has a beautiful eel, man. Has yeah. that? I'll be, I'll be interested. That eel never bit her I, at least once. No. I think it's huge, too. Oh, I think my internet's back on. Ooh. I got Better a hope. notification. You got the notification? Yep. You, you might have to work that work, baby. Yeah, you might have to mute your phone and go over and go see if you can join in that way. Because right now my, Alcat now my Alcatronics telling me the Hulk is now connected to the internet. Yeah, I'm like, nice. That's awesome. And you're getting that notification on your phone. Yep, my phone across all my devices. See? They're going. So ding, ding. people, this is what you want. This is what we're talking about: control notifications. Yeah. Let's say Ryan was traveling. Let's say he was at Macna, and he gets a notification that okay, Alcatronic is not talking to the tank now. You have on your other controller, you have the camera in the tank, so you can see what's happening in the tank. You can see your levels. 